Oh, well, sales of over a million copies and the success of the Hollywood movie adaptation of 2008, The Spider-Web Chronicles, is an international sensation, thrilling young readers right across the world. It earned its author, Tony Trelizzi, a reputation for having one of the most inventive imaginations in children's literature. Following up on this massive success, Tony's just launched the first book in a new trilogy called The Search for Wanda, and he joins us now to tell us more. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Good to be here. Um, I think Steve, it was one said of Stephen King about his imagination. He, he said something along the lines of, a, I have the brain of a small boy. And then he paused <laughs> and said, and I keep it in a jar on my desk <laughs> to tie in with the horror, stu the horror stuff. <laughs> where, where do you get all this um, creativity from? It's very similar. I mean, I, I do. I tap in. I think making books for children, you have to kind of tap into what it was like being a kid yourself. So oftentimes kind of my mantra is, you know, what would 10-year-old Tony want, you know, the old 40-year-old Tony can make. And so my studio has lots of toys and books and things that Excellent. I had when I was a kid to kind of keep me kind of keyed into that. And were you, were you a happy child? Did you have a happy childhood? <laughs> you know the way sometimes like kids can disappear and yeah. they get sucked into something like yeah. this at an early age. And, yeah. and, and therefore like they, they tend to be maybe loners to a degree. Well, I was a bit of a loner, but that, that doesn't mean I wasn't happy. I was yeah. a happy kid. My parents were very supportive of Excellent. me. And, and I was definitely the kid who sat in the back of the classroom and was just drawing and, you know, not listening to the teacher at all and, you know, making sound effects and stuff while I was doing it. But every time I would draw, the, it, there was always like a story that went with the yeah. drawing. It was never just a picture. So in a sense, then, you, you, this was always the path that you were de destined to go down. I guess so. I, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't kicking a football around, unfortunately. Yeah. So that, this, was, this was it for me. This was yeah, my but, thing. I mean, you know, with a million sales under your belt for one series, I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. I congratulations. Complain. I can't complain. And what is that like? I was just asking off air, you know, <laughs> do they actually ring you and say, hey, congratulations, Tony, there's a, we've hit the million mark in sales. They did. They called us when, when we hit the first um, million on the first Spiderwick book. And it, oddly, after that, I mean, it's, we probably, it's got to be, you know, it was over seven million before the movie came out, so I don't know what it's at now. Right. They stop it. I would still want to, <laughs> I'd still like to know. But it is, it's a strange feeling because I, I didn't grow up with, you know, it was a very middle class kind of family yeah. and just a little kid who loved to draw. Great. And so, yeah, that's beyond my that's wildest wonderful. dreams. Yeah. But then it gives you the freedom, obviously, to develop and do whatever you want in one yeah. sense. And, yeah. And that must be magic. It is nice because, um, you know, a lot of times I have a lot of stories percolating in my mind at once. And, um, you know, the, the opportunities that open up from the success of, of Spiderwick. Uh, absolutely have, have allowed me to kind of explore and do things on a different level than yeah. may have been if I was just starting out. Are you unusual in the sense that you can do the illustrations, but you'll also write the copy as well? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a number of, of authors and illustrators out there, but I, I think I'm, there's not a lot, you know, yeah, that, that yeah. do, especially, I think they tend to generally do like picture books for a younger age, which I've done, but I really love doing... Uh, you know, what, what we call in the States like middle grade books, right. you know, when you're like 10, 11, 12 years old. And to me, that's cause such a critical point because it's oftentimes when a, a child goes from reading because they have to, yeah, to yeah. reading now because they want and to. And that's when, that's for right. me, that's when I discovered like The Hobbit yeah. and, you know, yeah. and, and Grimm's fairy tales and all that stuff. So. Which, which obviously, well, I suppose that begs the obvious question, the chicken egg, and egg question. Which comes first then, the, the, the little drawing and then the words or is it the outline for the story and then the drawings come? It's a, bit, it's a bit organic. A lot of times it will start... Um, well, I'll kind of show you how it starts, actually. Please, yeah. Yep, yep. So a lot of times I'll start with a character. And in the case um, of The Search for Wandla, I, uh, I started with this girl that I had been kind of thinking about. And she was kind of inspired by some of my favorite uh, heroines from, from uh, children's books that I loved as a kid, like Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and uh, Wendy from Peter Pan and Wendy. And... Um, Dorothy from The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And all those stories had kind of a, a common thread about a girl who kind of leaves home and goes out into kind of a magic place to kind of understand what home and a family is. And they kind of return with that knowledge. And so I, I, I loved those stories as a kid. And, I, and I, as an adult, I kind of wondered, why is it that today we still love, we still celebrate those in, in new versions of the books, obviously in films starring Johnny Depp and things like that. Yeah. And so I, I, I wondered if I could, could tell a story uh, similar, but it also as a kid, I loved like Star Wars and and films like that and science fiction. So I thought, well, what if I could kind of blend the two, these kind of old fairy tales that I really enjoyed, and mix them with with my love of aliens and stuff. And this is kind of as I was doing this, I was kind of sketching this girl uh, over and over again, who I who I named um, Eva Nine, and I thought, you know, this, uh, what if this was this girl, and instead of maybe going to Wonderland or Neverland, what if she went to like an alien planet? And, and she was the only human on the planet. And as, as I, so as, as I'm sketching and the, and the thoughts are kind of going through my head, 
um, the story begins to develop. And usually it's a bunch of notes that yeah. are around a drawing that's about as loose as this, and it just slowly kind of develops as I go along. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, do you ever get really frustrated? You know, things, things aren't coming together and all it's like, the time yeah really? <laughs> yeah that's part of the process I think yeah. you know you, you you think you know and I will out once I kind of really get going I will outline a story I'll kind of make a road map for myself and then of course inevitably that 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 map does me no good and, and, I've got and how far down because I've, I've read of authors maybe writing three quarters of a novel and then sort of binning it and sort of saying oh no yeah you can go down a road it's and then awful. realize ah, oh, I should have gone down here I gotta go I gotta back it out and kind of go it happens you know you do yeah. it um, um I've had I just had that with the second book in Wanla the hero for Wanla I I the they go to a big human city, this big utopian futuristic city, and I wrote the whole thing and realized I, I don't have it right. I fig I've missed something <laughs> okay. somehow. Just go all the way back and rebuild <laughs> the city. And redo it. Um, Spider Man Chronicles is, is being redone in paperback now, for, and for younger viewers who might not have got it first time around, now's the opportunity to. That's to, right, to, it just to, came to, out in, in paperback, and uh, as did Wanla, and, and I'm very excited about that. We did new jackets and stuff, and uh, in fact, I was in London this weekend with Sarah Bolger from the film. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. It was great. We had great fun. She's a good sport. You've been great. Thank you for joining us this morning, Tony. Give, us a, give our viewers a quick look at the drawing, just so we can hold it up maybe to one or two. For eBay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get a good 50 cents for that. That's fantastic. No, you put a signature on that, we got a hell of a lot more. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Tony. Good Thanks luck. Thanks for having me. And uh, safe trip back. Thank yeah, you, indeed.